Hey, Coach, I was just wondering, <clears throat> after Saturday's scrimmage, coaches were saying that you're now going to start shifting over to Arizona prep. Has that started? And what does that prep look like? Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've uh, shifted onto just doing Arizona, and it's just um, you know getting our kids familiar with uh, a little bit more with their schemes, um, what to expect, things like that. What you would do in a normal week, as far as just install and um, delivering all the things that what the kids need to know to them uh, in a timely manner, and just moving forward from there. Practice, put it on film, and and uh, evaluate the film and make our corrections. Um, I know Arizona was going to be announcing their starting quarterback today. How has it been like for you needing to like kind of prepare for kind of two different quarterbacks or whatnot, and then now maybe moving forward with like a clear mind? I don't know if they're going to announce it publicly or not. Yeah, it's uh, you know, we've 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 watched the the three kids that they've talked about, and um, you know, we see uh, the the potential problems that uh, each of them could bring. And we're just uh, trying to have a contingency contingency plan for uh, each of the kids as they come in. I mean, it's hard to just wholesale change what you're doing. There's got to be you know little tiny nuances that you change when somebody else comes in. But I feel like we've been getting a getting a good uh, dose of it against our own offense with having uh, Baylor and Jaron and and uh, Jacob uh, facing those guys every day. Just you know, just some of them have a little bit different set, uh, skill set, and you you play to it like you would uh, having different quarterbacks like Arizona has. Say me? Okay. Hey, Coach, um, I'm wondering if uh, there's still position battles going on or uh, is your one and two deeps pretty much set right now? They're, they're getting close to getting set. Um, you know, right now we've got to really focus in on on giving the correct guys the, the reps. Um, and so we're, we're still rotating in uh, at some positions three deep, which takes some reps away from the ones and the twos when you're getting, getting down that deep. But for the most part, it's the guys that we anticipate being ones and twos are taking majority, and some of the threes are still, still getting some reps. Just not as many at this point. Hey, Mitch, go ahead. Yeah, you, you guys have a uh really multiple defensive looks it kind of depends on the week and, and one of those looks sometimes you know, drop eight it's become kind of more of a common thing in college football that people think Iowa State Georgia does it what what is it about that that teams are maybe adopting that more in college football today um you know I think the the name of the game is really keeping the offense out of the end zone and um there's so many different stats you can chase, you know, so many different things that you can, um, you know, if you're chasing sacks or you're chasing um, picks or you're chasing so many different things. I think explosives on offense is one thing that really, uh, when you're starting to see a lot of explosive, you're starting to see a lot of points. Um, just having having a drop eight system in that, that you can rely on and go back to just keeps the ball in front of you. Uh, keeps the offense a little bit less explosive, just makes it a little bit harder for them to earn everything driving down the field. And I mean, nowadays with uh, with the read zones and the uh, so much speed on the perimeter, all the all the formations you're getting and the way that people are lining up nowadays, it's really difficult to just um, you know play man to man without without any kind of help over the top. And so um, I think just mixing it up the way that you do with. Uh, your mans, your zones, your drop eights. I mean, you've got. I remember when I was at Utah, at uh, uh, when Kalani was a coordinator. We were talking about it the other day when we played uh, uh, when we played Leach when he was at Washington State. We had four different drop eight calls. You know, two different man drop eights and two different zone drop eights. And it's just sometimes you start to face offenses where it's a little bit more um, required for you to have something like that. Um, but I think it's always nice to just kind of have in your pocket. To, to have a drop bait that's that keeps everything in front of you. Now, obviously, some offensive schemes you'll play it, you know, almost the whole time, just with a couple blitzes, and some other schemes that you'll play, you'll be a little bit more four down and and uh, pressure based, and uh, you know, probably won't see drop bait at all in in a game. And so, all of it's a little bit more predicated off what the offense does. I don't think any defense out there 
including ourselves, we don't really come out and say we're a drop eight team and this is what we do. And we prep against every, every formation. It's just you don't do that. You say, okay, what does the offense do? Uh, what's going to be what's going to make it difficult for them to score, move the ball? How can we try to create turnovers with the same look? Like those kinds of things. But I think you're seeing it more free. It's it's really been around, um, you know, for a while. I'm talking about Kalani having four different drop eights when we played Mike Leach at when he was coordinator at Utah. I mean, it's just it's been around. People have always done it, but you're probably seeing it a lot more frequently now as a base defense, especially in conferences like the Big 12, where where you know that that style of offense is is uh, you know is, is being played by almost everybody. And so I think uh, hopefully that answers your question. But you know it'll it it feels like uh, you know I haven't been in, in the game of football for. For as long as some of these other coaches, I have been, you know, been in it uh, for you know 15 years now, and just you, you start to see kind of the rotation of of uh, you know retro schemes that start to come back and then disappear again, and shows you know peaks his head back up. It's almost like clothing in the way that uh, you know schemes are, where people start to go away from this, they do a little bit more of this, and all of a sudden now you're actually seeing more teams. Doing uh, using more tight ends and doing more of that, where you know a couple of years ago it was only you could probably name the teams that were that were you know 12 personnel and doing that type of stuff. Now it's you're seeing, seeing a lot more teams become more, more multiple. So uh, it's really just having something that sound, but uh, being able to still play multiple things like like you were saying. We we will be multiple and trying to trying to uh, prepare for offenses. Yeah, I appreciate that answer. And I wanted to change gears real quick, too, uh, on a follow-up question. Uh, from Through fall camp on your defense, who were some of – maybe if you had to give a label of maybe some of the MVPs, if you are – some of the guys that just consistently day in, day out were, were some of the standout top performers for you guys, who were they? I've, I've been really, really impressed with uh, our corner group in general. I mean, we we feel like this – you know, I think we've talked about it uh, leading up to this – this fall that we feel like it's been the deepest group that we've had at the corner spot. I feel like we have guys that can play. I mean, um, when you feel feel comfortable about that, then you, you're you more likely to call pressures and stuff like that and, and kind of hang yourself out there and be a little bit more aggressive. And so we've got a group that uh, we feel pretty good about at the corner spot. We met Delo, Keenan, um, you know, uh, Jacob uh, Robinson, just, just new, newly arrived, has done a really, really good job. I mean, uh, Caleb Hayes has as well, you know Isaiah Heron. Th- those guys are really playing at a high level, and when you have corners that can play, it just uh, changes a lot of different ways that you can see things as a coordinator, as, as far as coverages and what you're doing. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, uh, Greg, go ahead. Hey, e, uh, with your ones and maybe some of your twos, even what's the balance right now between um, getting physical reps and getting your guys healthy to game day at this point? I, th- I, th- I think that our, our ones, uh, really our twos too, but our ones and twos are doing a really good job taking care of each other. You know, it's been important for us to make sure that we have good on good uh, going the whole time so that you don't, uh, you know, you don't have a guy that may be still developmental that's learning and growing, rolling up on, on, on a starting player or you know, something like that, and you wanna, certainly want to stay away from those situations. But our ones and twos have done a pretty good job this whole camp taking care of each other and trying to stay off the ground and, and uh, play physical and fast, but, but uh, you know, try to keep each other healthy, not taking shots, you know, unnecessary shots and those kinds of things. And so um, I think it's really important for us to still practice that way. We all agree that it's important for us to practice that way all the way up leading to the game. We can uh, keep that edge, but uh, um, I think it's just really just been on our players and they've done a good job staying healthy. Any, any serious concerns at this point, or has your main group kind of stayed upright and, and ready to go to this point? Uh, upright for the most part. Uh, nobody really feel like you're trying to trick me into an injury question. I, I, <laughs> no, I don't know of anybody that's, uh, that we're missing that uh, off the top of my head. I think we're f- f- fairly healthy on defense. Thank you. All right, Coach e, thank you. Good? Yep, you're good. All right.